Hello there. Well, my hectic career has included three Formula One World Championships, a best-selling trilogy, and 25 years in network television. But then I walked away from it all for a quieter life. I'm Steve Matchett, kind of retired. Join me, won't you? Well, today I'm going to share with you a little project I undertook with my 1941 Willys MB, a slat grill Willys, one of the early production Jeeps from World War II. And I want to try and make a storage box that will sit between the front face of the slat grill and the top of the bumper blade there. There's not an awful lot of storage area around either a Ford GPW or a Willys MB, and that is very useful space for storage. I just highlighted this with an arrow as it's 29 inches from the outside face of the two frame rails and 10 inches deep from that bumper rail. And here yeah, there's a photograph clearly from the Second World War just showing how keen the troops were in all theatres of operation, whether it was Europe or uh, over in North Africa or in the Pacific, to use that space as much as possible. And the troops would often use old wine casings or artillery shell cases or grenade cases, whatever they had, as storage. I wanted to use reclaimed timber for this little project so it would look more period correct. And my dear neighbour Ronnie had this abandoned frame that was just sitting in his yard. and. I asked if I could buy it, and he very sweetly said, take it and have fun with it. So thank you, Ronnie. The first thing I needed to do was bring that dismantled frame down to the house, and clearly as recycled timber, you expect to find all sorts of nails and screws in it. It's just the way things are with reclaimed wood. So the first thing to do was take the mitre saw and cut off a couple of inches well clear of any potential metal that was in that wood. Um, it's just something you have to be aware of. The timber had actually taken quite a, a twist. It was quite warped anyway, just through being exposed to the elements in North Carolina. The high heat of summer and the cold of winter and the rain over 10 years will start to warp that wood. But it is possible to use it. Here's the evidence of that. Using an orbital sander and a little bit of elbow grease, you can get that algae and green moss to come off the timber. And then with a the mitre saw, just cut the mitered edges, again, 29 by 10, and then cramp them together with good quality wood glue or soon pull them together. I highlighted the interior dimension here, which is, I guess, what, seven and a half inches. I think the timber planks were an inch and a quarter, so that will give an internal dimension of seven and a half inches. And I just used some scrap wood offcuts um, cut to that dimension and then brace them in between the cramps. You can see here at the bottom of the picture, those two pieces of what looked like scrap wood were actually cut to precisely the dimension, seven and a half inches on my mitre saw. And then I cramped them in between um, the pieces uh, that form the frame and that will give support so I'm not pulling in and twisting the box as it, as it cures. And then set about producing a frame on the inside of the box so that the top of the box had something to sit on and again all this is made with that same reclaimed timber from Ronnie. The box top itself has some wonderful um, markings and character in the wood, the knots of the wood I wanted to keep and I just marked the x and y axis. I built a frame again with the mitre saw around the top so we wouldn't be dealing with the end grain to give it uh, a little more support put some half inch holes there as you can see in the four corners so that the rope I would use as a rope handles had um, somewhere to mount and then using 3 8 doweling uh, on the X and Y axis again pulled in with sash cramps and they uh, they hold that rope very well indeed I couldn't get it to move so I thought that was a good idea a good bond and uh, I like the idea that using dowels rather than any screws, it looks more correct. So there is the top of the box, pretty much complete. You can see in this shot, I've already painted it with uh, flat olive drab green paint and then distress it back down with sandpaper to make it look 
period correct. You can see that knot in that wood standing out. I love that. I found some welting, bonnet welting or hood welting uh, online and I wanted to use that as it's very much period correct for a seal for the top of the box to sit on. And then I made what I call a bullion container, uh, not from that same planking, but from some pieces of pine I had left over that will sit inside the box. But I did put rope handles on that. I thought that looked quite nice and uh, keeping uh, in keeping with the rest of it. So there is the finished box, pretty much complete. I wanted to stencil it, 101st Airborne, uh, 506, second battalion e company which is the band of brothers designation i have a good relationship with the guys down at decoa and i've uh, acted as a guest speaker for them on d-day so uh, i wanted to do that for those guys and mark it up as a 101st airborne box and there it is sitting on the jeep in its finish and final state i have some original uh, canvas strapping uh, that is also the same strapping, if you're familiar with Jeeps, which holds the canvas top down. So these straps would actually fit underneath the passenger seat in the Jeep. But I got reproductions of them, and uh, I think they look right. And uh, so there it is. There is the finished toolbox made to the correct dimensions sitting on the Jeep. It's a fun little project. Join me again, and we'll share some other little projects as they come along. I enjoyed that. All right, take care. Bye-bye.